Hi folks, welcome to Tuesday, welcome to your hobby nightmares. We are one quarter of the way through the week, look at it that way. And if you are having a few days off because you work in retail or you work over the weekend, then I hope you are having a very lovely time off and you're recharging those batteries. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The real subscribe button is below that as well and the pal on the Patreon. If you want to buy me a beer, you can do that over there and also become a member of the channel if you like my stuff and all that fun stuff. We have some hobby nightmares, and these are my favorite hobby nightmare days, I've got to admit. When I get home from work, or I finish teaching, and I come home, and I have a cup of tea, and I sit down, and I haven't read these hobby nightmares. Uh, these are in format, though, so they, they should be uh, easy enough to read. And it's nice to go over these things when I haven't read them sometimes, because you get my visceral, normal reaction, rather than me sitting here and just regurgitating whatever has been sent in to me, do you know what I mean? So, anyway, let's get on the ball, shall we? With Madman Robbie. And Madman Robbie says, Hi there, North. I've been watching your show for a while, but recently hopped into the Discord. Good lad. Well, if you've been watching the show for a while, come onto the Discord earlier than that. I mean, you should just be on the Discord from the first moment you come on the channel. Because it's free. And it's a really good support network. The sheer amount of people that I know that have been on there and have gotten a lot of help from a lot of people... It's beyond counting at this point. I, I did have a little little document where I made a note of people who, who sent me testimonials, but I gave up because there was too many. So come on to the Discord. If you're having a bad time, come on to the Discord and have a chat. Anyway, he says, First off, I wanted to say thanks for all your videos. They help me when I've been writing my books and painting my minis. No problem, man. Second, I had two horror stories for you. All right. Since you're writing books, I'm hoping these are going to be good. The first... I've been playing 40k at my friendly local game store for a few years now. Usually Kill Team and Necromunda, since I love the smaller scale of those games and don't have the Monopoly money to afford to afford a full-on army. While I play Gene Steel Occultists in Necromunda, my main force and reason I prefer Kill Team has always been the Dark Eldar. I've loved I've loved them since I was six or seven years old, and started reading the codexes with and 40k novels. The thing has been has been though. Then I have trouble seeing the Dark Elder as an army. In the lore, their weapons and equipment is best used against lightly armed, unsuspecting mooks, or to terrorise civilian populations. As fun as that is, that's not really something to do on the tabletop. In Kill Team, however, a strike team of, Dr of Drukari makes more sense with the lore than a stand-up fight with Space Marines. So one day, I went with my friend to play on Games Day when the store was at its busiest. All right. We roll up and find a guy to play. Being one of the few Xenos players, I often I often get my pick of the games when it's Space Marines, as far as the eye can see. In this case, it was me and a Space Wolf player. Remember that part? Oh god, here we go. However, when I pull up my case of guys, he looks at me confused and then almost disgusted. Yeah, sounds like a Space Wolf player. This was a while ago, so I don't remember exactly what he said, but he was actually disgusted that I was playing Dark Eldar. While his words escaped me, when I tried to understand what he meant, he made, made it very clear that a certain type of people play Dark Eldar, quote-unquote. And me being a goth kid just proved it, and I was playing the game to live out some perverted Cenobite fantasy. I took one look at his space wolves, <laughs> then the wolf he, is, he was wearing and the tail clipped onto the back of his pants, and told him I would just find another, another table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean... I don't know whether he actually had those things attached to him, but, uh, you know, I, 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 maybe you put that in there for effect, because I find it hard to believe that he was wearing all that stuff, but, like, if he was, fair play. Uh, if he wasn't, the best thing to say is, like, mate, you're playing Space Wolves. What kind of a fantasy are you thinking about doing to certain furry things, you know? Like, maybe we need to, like, take a little step back from the accusations there, pal, you know? Just, uh, you know. The second horror story, I, I was at the same friendly local game store in the back room on a painting day. It was great since they had tons of good art supplies and the room was like a nice lounge. However, there were still games happening at the tables that were still set up nearby. There I was painting some new models while my friends played with some local group that happened to be there and I was passingly familiar with. I'm painting, not really paying attention to anything else, and this kid comes up to me and says, Excuse me, ma'am, how are you doing that? While pointing to my models. 
I'm a guy, by the way. I just happen to look like a young Marilyn Manson most days. <laughs> well, good. Fair play to you, man. Fair play to you. Don't, like, for not, like... Um, you know, I'm, I'm a man, actually. You know, I'm a fair play. Uh, once I replied and laughed at his reaction to my voice, we got talking about painting, and he asked me to help him with his towel. This kid was maybe 13 at most, and obviously a nerd. Sadly, his towel really gave the thin your paints uh, feeling off. So, we set about fixing some of his models, and he was really excited to use them. I don't even think the quick paint job we did were, was fully dry when he wanted to go to a table where two problems manifested. The first was that his tiny towel force did not meet the minimum or even half of the table point requirement. The second, and a part that's hard to describe about the story, even when I tell it to friends in person, is how hyper-competitive the club types were acting, intimidating the kid without directly insulting him or anything. It was like the atmosphere was toxic, even though I don't believe the guys at the tables were trying to be mean or aware of what they were doing. Okay, yeah, this happens a lot. This happens a hell of a lot. I, I've noticed this on a few gaming clubs uh, that I've been to, where the atmosphere is very competitive, everybody there is out to win, everyone there is playing for blood, and they find it very hard to shift gears. They find it very hard to come down out of the competitive headspace. So if you go in there with like a fluffy list, or if you're a younger person, or maybe somebody who's not super into the current meta, they will either chase you out verbally by saying, maybe you don't want to play here, that sort of thing, or they will straight up just table you within, within a turn. Now, here's the thing. I don't believe that's particularly toxic. I think that's just their club and what they like to do. So, if you don't like it, find another club. Fair dues, you know. Where I think it crosses the line is when people start acting like douches. When they start uh, actively targeting new players and testing their metal and things like that. Yeah, don't be that guy. Right? You're not in a teen drama. You're not Biff Tannen. Shut your fucking face. You know what I mean? Like, just, just get a lot, get on with your life. Who cares? Uh, to help him out, I pitched us making a joint team that was the same point value as a proper army. There was some hesitation to this, as it was technically a two versus one game at that point, but they saw Tau and Dark Eldar, and, and, and eventually they relented. So we played. The kid did shockingly well. And I mean, tactically, this kid knew what he was doing. Not just lucky dice rolls. Mostly, it was just positioning fire warriors, but he knew when and where to apply covering fire to my witches and racks running into melee. Hopped up on Mount Dew and Pixie Sticks. <laughs> we eventually beat the sisters player, who retreated to throwing a fit about it being unfair on 2 versus 1, and how he can't play right with two types of armies that are attacking him at the same time and things like that. Clearly, this was making the kid a bit nervous, and I'm getting irritated by just this guy's man-child whining. I remember him finally going at, going at one point. Why would the Dark Eldar work with the Tau anyway? They're enemies. They shouldn't work together. Why are they even fighting together? And in a fit of edgelord powers, I just told him, because I wanted to destroy something beautiful. And the sheer cringe of that statement seemed to shut him up and made the kid laugh. Afterwards, the kid kept expanding his Tau army, and we had a few more painting sessions. Now I see him want every once in a while painting his own steadily growing Tau Horde. Sorry for the long email, North, but I want to thank you for the work and send you two interesting stories. Have a good one and happy war gaming. Madman Robbie. Cheers, man. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, always nurture new people coming into the hobby. And if you are around when a, a, a man child or something like that like comes along and really wants to like put it to somebody, at least you're there to like readdress the balance. You know what I mean? Because. <sighs> These guys will never leave the hobby. They will always be in the hobby. It just is what it is. There is a difference, though, between calling out BS and being whiny. I've had friends be accused of being called whiny. I've been accused of that as well. Simply for calling out bad habits at the table. Like saying, please don't do that. Or, you know, mate, like, y there was a brief for the tournament that we're doing. You haven't followed the brief. You've just brought something that's way overpowered, you know? Uh, normally it happens in narrative games and narrative campaigns that I attend. When somebody brings, like, a completely overpowered list and wipes the floor with everybody and people are too are too nice to say anything to them, then they play me. And I just tell them straight up. Like, I, because I get annoyed. I'm like, no, mate, you, you, you were given a brief. You haven't followed it. Like, this is not fun for me. It's not fun for anybody that you've played today. 
You know, what are you getting out of this? What are you getting out of it? Like, like this is our free time you're wasting, essentially, by bringing a list that you, you've been told not to bring. Um, so yeah, um, you will get people who accuse people of being whiny and, and being man-childish for simply pointing out BS. But this wasn't one of those occasions. This is one of those occasions where it's hilarious that this guy who, with his Drakari, this Marilyn Manson lookalike with his Drakari and some kid just tabled you. I would just be, that would be hilarious to me. That's just, <laughs> just, just hilarious. Anyway, Mike says, and they're always called Mike. I wonder, I wonder if this is going to be an interesting story. Whenever somebody changes their name to Mike, I'm always like, hmm, yes, this might be an interesting one. So, Mike says, Hi, Exile. To set the scene, my hobby group has been playing Horus Heresy for several years, and we used to do so fairly regular. Uh, we used to do fairly regular apocalypse games at the local university. Our group had known each other for a few years, but this particular game, one person had brought some friends from a neighbouring city. Okay, so you're at a hobby club, university hobby club, doing an apocalypse game, and somebody bring, brings friends from the next city across. We also had two new group members from the student club who had just started Horus Heresy. Overall, there were about 10 people in the game in which the story takes place. Awesome. Now, I'll introduce the bad guy. Let's call him Dave. They're always Dave. I'm, I apologize I apologize to Mike last time. I'm apologizing to Dave this time. I seem to have created a cult of Dave where every bad person's called Dave in these stories. Dave or Mike. So I apologize. One particular long-standing member of the group was the stereotype of a bad neckbeard, or a bad nerd. Poor hygiene, overweight, with a straggly beard that resembled a fungal growth. He was the kind of guy who constantly insisted on Sabaton songs being played during games that he thought related to his army. Oh god, it's cringe. Whenever somebody mentions Sabaton, I look at them, and I weigh them up very... Very intently, like, okay, are you one of the good Sabaton fans or one of those Sabaton fans? Um, at the time, he was running mechanized Smurfs, Ultramarines, in tanks. So this phase focused on playing Ghost Division. He had a reputation for losing his temper and wasn't particularly popular in the group, but some of the students lived with him. Ugh. So in order to make their lives easier, the wider group tried to pull him more in line with social norms. Yeah, uh, that is that is problematic. Oh, Jesus Christ, pulling pulling somebody in line with social norms. What are you, a therapist? <clears throat> Setup involved meeting and greeting the newbies, doing snack runs and settling in for what was going to be a full day of carnage. The atmosphere was positive, and there was a shredder, uh, a shared sense that it was nice to have some new members for a change. So we all wanted to make them feel welcome and not scare them off. Now we get to turn one. The Raven Guard player, who shall remain nameless, started running assault marines full of melter bombs towards the tank lines, and he was close enough for a turn two charge into Dave's tanks. This caused Dave to panic a bit, so when it came to his half of turn one, he began shooting at them. This is where things went bad. His first volley killed one marine in a 20-man squad. <laughs> Jesus. He then lined up for another unit to shoot them, and for some reason felt it was necessary to count how many models were left in the unit. <laughs> the Raven Guard player helpfully tried to say 19. This had interrupted Dave's counting, so he ignored the comment and started all over again. <laughs> again, the Raven Guard player tries to help. He says it was a 20-man squad, <laughs> and one man was dead. So now there was 19. I don't know why that's tickled me so much. That's such a Raven God thing to do. <laughs> that's such a Raven God thing to do. He just, <laughs> he's just there. This lovely, innocent Raven God player just like twiddling his thumbs. He's like, he's, he, he's, he's like fucking the Count from Sesame Street, you know. You killed one Space Marine, and there were 20 Space Marines in the squad. So now there are 19. This caused Dave to flip out, quit, <laughs> quit the apocalypse game, and not even pack his models. Dave just went home. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me so much. It's just a really helpful, helpful Raven Godfather. They're the sweetest people, man. 
Like, I, I swear, I've played, like, several Raven Guard players, and they've all been beautiful human beings. They're just, like, they're just, like, they're all in, they're all in House Ravenclaw, do you know what I mean? Like, they're all, like, even ra either Ravenclaws or Hufflepuffs, if you're doing it from, from Harry Potter. They're those kinds of people. Very intelligent, but, like, also, like, super, super normal and innocent, and, like, I want to help this man out. Here you go. <laughs> this guy just flipped out and left. Oh, my God. The rest of the group was a bit shocked, to say the least, and the Raven Guard player had no idea what he'd done wrong. <laughs> the rest of us were trying to manage the situation by keeping the game fun and explaining away Dave's beh behaviour to the newbies. Overall, in order to keep the game going, Dave's team used his models on his behalf, expecting him to come back after cooling off. Dave didn't come back, though. After an hour or so, he instead messaged the Facebook group that he was selling his army. To put the cherry on the cake, one of the newbies had absolutely no mer no mercy and took him up on it. <laughs> oh my god. This happened a few years ago, and Dave no longer has anything to do with our group, but has since uh, bought several new armies. The Chad newbie stayed and still rocks some of Dave's repainted models. Thanks, Lucas. Okay, so... Um, oh no, that's not thanks, Lucas. That's the next person. Um, yeah, so, yeah, man, I mean... Ugh, what can I say? Like, that is a... You will find people in life, though, when they're so angry with something that they will cut their own nose off to spite their face just so they can feel a bit more of a victim, if you know what I'm saying. Like, they will literally go out of their way to sell their army, to get rid of it, to say that the army's the problem and the group's the problem. They don't want to look inwards at themselves. One of the main parts of growing for me when I was at university and, and after university was realising that a lot of the problems in my life were, were self-imposed. They were, they, were, they were me getting in my own way rather than anything else so once you've found that once you've addressed that and you and you're you're honest with yourself and you say that that behavior is not cool neither is this neither is that you start to grow and you start to like put down real foundations for how you are as a person going forwards this person seems to have not learned that lesson yet unfortunately so you know and again apologies to all Dave's out there for being lumped in with this one <clears throat> lucas says hey north lucas here I wanted to share how amazing hobby groups can be. Here, here in a German city, we have a hobby group of roughly 50 active members. We meet up in a toy store which has an entire room dedicated to tabletop games. That's cool. There are two giant tables, an airbrush, placemats, brushes free to use. It's actually the store owner's son who founded the group and we have a, con a consistent influx of new members, young and old. There are tons of free workshops by incredibly talented painters. Of course, everyone there is nice and welcoming, but one guy especially is an absolute chad. One time, I wanted to get the Imperium magazine issue with the flayed ones from my neighbour, who was 13 years of age, since he had just started to collect Necrons, oh, a man of culture. I, I've always wanted to collect uh, Samurai Ninja Necrons, but I've never found models that really do, do them justice. But the scalpers beat me to it, and I could not for the life of me find the specific issue. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a video on scalpers this week, because I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get annoyed again about the, the FOMO thing that Games Workshop do, so leave that one with me. Maybe this week, maybe next week. Well, the guy from the hobby group messaged me that he had found an issue, and he'd got it from my neighbour. Although he played Necrons himself, I wouldn't have minded to have one more, one more uh, a few more flayed ones. But as he put it, he is happy to help a new kid find their way into the hobby. Also, a couple of weeks ago, six other guys and I wanted to find a date for a 40k tactics workshop. Just when I was about to make some suggestions, I heard a really nasty I had I had a really nasty fight with my wife, which has mostly been resolved by now, thank God. Wives. It's what are you gonna do? <laughs> I wanted to say something else there, but I'm not going to. I told the group that I am having a, a bit of trouble with my partner and thus wanted to focus on my family for a few weeks. This guy immediately contacted me, shared his marriage experiences with me and gave me contract addresses for a, a couple's counsellor that just offered to talk whenever I felt the need to. All this happened on the same day we had a fight and the fact that I could present a, couple of, uh, uh, present a concrete therapist counsellor to my wife is what resolved the issues somewhat. Even though I barely know this guy, we had we had a 40k match, some good talks, and, a, and and split a White Dwarf magazine. He goes out of his way to help everybody in the group time and again. 
Just wanted to share a nice story, even if it's not suited for Hobby Nightmares. Cheers from Germany. No, it is. It is, Lucas. It is. Um, Hobby Nightmares is titled that because the, the, the marquee stories that we get are the cringy, funny ones that are generally Hobby Nightmares. But that doesn't mean that we, we, every single story needs to be one of absolute horror and, and debauchery. Sometimes we can have some really, really cool things about the hobby coming up. And I always think it's important to do a balanced view. This is why I've never wanted to be the Games Workshop bashing channel. That's never been my intent. Never been my want. Never been my want. Um, I think people like that do a service for the hobby. But I also think that uh, that means that when Games Workshop actually do something bad, if I've been railing on them for months and months and months and months, you're never going to think that anything that I say is coloured properly. You know, you're, you're never going to take what I say seriously. So I'd rather you know that when Northern Exile is annoyed with them, he's annoyed for good reason. He's not just doing it for clicks. Because um, it's, a, it's a... One thing I think that I've got over most other creators is that I, I invested in that company. I've got stock in that company. Like, I've worked for that company. I've invested years of my life into that company. So I have a stake in, in wanting it to succeed. So when it doesn't, you can you know it's coming from a good place because I'm literally sitting here saying it needs to be better because they are the custodians of the hobby, whether we like it or not. And I think it is a force for good. It's a net positive. But they are getting very close to being a net negative. And that's why it's very important that we hear stories like this that show that the hobby that they're safeguarding is worth safeguarding. As Samwise Gamgee says, there's good in this world and it's worth fighting for. Which is why this channel exists in the first place, to be honest with you. Um, Nex says, Hi, North. Uh, being a fan and a subscriber for a few years now. Oh, thank you. And have loved watching your channel grow and still enjoy listening to your hobby nightmares to this day. Especially after work. Cheers, man. So I thought it was about time I sent in my own nightmare, if you can call it that. There will be a couple of names mentioned here, but nothing bad to say about these lads at all. So change them if you wish. No, I didn't. But I'd love to see the, uh, to give these guys a shout out they deserve. All right, let's see. Um, let me just scroll down here so we can get the actual story. There we go. I recently attended my first ever Warhammer event. And specifically, my first Horus Heresy event in London a couple of months ago. It was a 3,000 points, wow, round-robin style tournament. Uh, dude, that, I'm getting tired even reading that. 3,000 points of Horus Heresy. Round-robin style. My lord. That, that, for those of you who don't know, round-robin is basically at a league table where you play everybody twice or once. Normally it's everybody home and away, but you probably play each other once in this, in this tournament. As no one in my local area had managed to get their Age of Darkness boxes ready to play before the event, coincidentally, these games ended up being my first Horus Heresy games ever, and oh boy, was I jumping in at the deep end. Yeah, man, you definitely are. You definitely are. I know a few Horus Heresy players that are friends of mine who will be, be listening to this just shaking their heads going, oof, that's a bad start. That's a bad game. It's a brilliant game, but like, it, it's an involved game. You know, start, start at a thousand points and work your way up is my, uh, my suggestion. That's what I did. I loved it. The event was due to start on Saturday morning, so after finishing work on Friday, I decided to hop on the train to the hostel I'd booked just up the road from where the event was being held as London is about 3.5 hours away from where I normally stay. I didn't want to get up super early and risk being late due to delays by travelling down on the day. So, I rocked up to this hostel, and to my shock, read sheer fucking joy, there was a nightclub at the first floor of this hostel, which as guests we got free admission into, and your first drink was free. <laughs> this sounds like... This sounds like... This sounds like the, the last days of Caligula, man. This is going to go terribly wrong. Uh, who did you end up with? This, this. If you're doing well, it was a, it was a Drakari lady. If you're doing wrong, then it's a Tyranid lady. Um, sorry for the old Tyranid ladies out there. But most of them are either married, so you're not going to be able to pull them anyway, or they're like a bit odd, you know? Yeah, every, every Drakari lady I've met has been like really cool, really funny. But anyway, that's me generalizing again. That's what I do on this channel. I, I just throw people into these big old groups and go, that's what you are now, until somebody convinces me otherwise. But there you go. I'm an idiot. What are you, what are you, gonna, what are you gonna do? So, wanting to be a responsible 20-year-old adult, quote-unquote, 
I quietly grabbed my things after checking in and made my way upstairs to my 30-man th bunk bed room. I got top bunk, so was already off to a great start, and thought it best to get my head down relatively early so I could go, go, uh, go and fully fit first thing in the morning. Okay. As it was only around half nine at this time. Yeah, dude, you're not sleeping half nine if there's a bloody uh, club upstairs or downstairs. I'm not even ashamed to say it took me 30 minutes of lying on my top bunk listening to the awesome selection of music this club had going on before I said to myself out loud, fuck it, let's get messy. I jumped out of bed, uh, put on my going out clothes and proceeded to do just that. Crawling back into my bunk at about 3 a.m. in the morning after too many... Five for two Jaeger bombs. Oh my god. All to myself. And boy, did I feel it the next morning. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I want to know where this place is. That sounds really cool. I woke up at about half past seven to some big Swedish guy flopping out of bed and crawling to the bathroom to sort his morning admin out. Head pounding, I thought it prudent to do the same climbing down from my bunk in as much of a slow motion fashion as possible to stop my head from exploding. I grabbed my towel and made my way to the showers to sort my life out. My only regret from the night before was that the hangovers exist. Yes, they do. After being dressed and grabbing my army case... Oh, before we, I go on. Uh, a little bit of a nightmare from uh, Northern Exile. I went out a few weeks ago and I was convinced that I was the next day I was just going to die. Like, I was just too old for this shit and I can't do it any anymore. I got home and I had the worst beer fear ever. I, I I drank too much. My body just rebelled. I got home. I went to sleep with a searing feeling of paranoia. Because obviously alcohol is a depressant. You know, I had this searing, horrible feeling of paranoia even before going to sleep. I woke up in the morning, ran to the toilet and threw my lungs up for must have been about an hour. I came out. Went back to sleep and just felt rotten the entire day. Felt like I wanted to vom the entire nine yards. And for some reason, my eyes were really hurting. I was like, oh, what's going on? And my friend said, <clears throat> dude, like I mentioned before, John, um, big beady Viking John. He said, uh, dude, like, uh, did you get into a fight last night? I said, no. He said, you got two black eyes. And I looked in the mirror. We were, we were having breakfast this time at a local cafe. And I looked in the mirror. And yeah, I had two black eyes and my eyes were red. I burst all the blood vessels, dry heaving, in my eyes and around my eyes. That's how bad I was. For a full week, I was not right. Even even my hormones, my mood was not right. I know what my mood is now. After therapy and after, you know, managing depression, things like that, I know what I normally feel like. And it was just up and down and up and down and up and down. It was horrible. Um, it took me over a week to get over it. I'm too old. I'm too old for this shit these days. Anyway, next says, After getting dressed and grabbing my army case, I went downstairs to breakfast, then walked to the store where the event was held, as I didn't know the bus routes in London well enough to risk it hungover, uh, to, to, hungo to risk it hungover to fuck. And to my amazement, I made it to the store with about half an hour to spare before the doors opened. So I had long enough to sit down and realised that this hangover was going to be the death of me trying to play Horus Heresy and remember what I could from the bygone days of 7th edition. Luckily, the event handed out cheat sheets with special rules and unit stats, so this helped me quite a bit. The day was split up like this. One game in the morning, break for lunch, and one or two games in the afternoon, depending on how players felt. Oh, I like that, depending on how they feel, I like that. Okay. With prizes handed out for things such as best painted army, etc., I received the name of my first opponent, phone, uh, 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 sorry, my bloody mouth, my first opponent from the organiser, Nathan, who was a nice chap named Sam, who brought some frankly stunning Alpha Legion to go up against my Sons of Horus. Shout out to Nathan for putting the whole event together, it was genuinely amazing. Well, good on you, Nathan, good, good lad. I met Sam at the table, and after talking about our armies and commenting on how well painted each each were, I apologised in advance and explained my situation and that I was thoroughly hanging out hanging out of my gink, to which we had a giggle. But I was still determined to have the best game possible, albeit a bit slower than usual, with a few breaks in between, so I could try and stomach some food and get plenty of water down me, to which was more than accommodating. To which he was more than uh, than accommodating, and in fact joined me on these survival breaks. 
He only had a couple of games of Heresy under his belt, and as this was my first, so the slow pace of the game was quite frankly needed for the pair of us to try and figure things out. We only made it to the start of turn 3 before we timed out as we had uh, a lot of stopping to do rules checks as these things are bound to happen with the new system and all that jazz. Sam ended up winning the game on victory points so we shook hands and the event broke for lunch. Another massive shout out to Sam for being such a good sport and keeping me alive while, one hand, while on one hand he slaughtered my army with the other. Awesome man. After stuffing my face with enough water to quench the thirst of a small African village... <laughs> <laughs> and hoisting duck wraps to legally be declared a member of the species, I returned to my table to see that I had one best painted HQ, to which I won a blind bag prize of a set of plasma guns and got the name of my next op uh, opponent, our game being the absolute highlight of our night and one of the best games of Warhammer I've had in years. My next opponent was a big chappy named Nick, who was an absolute lad. He brought a very infantry heavy death guard list with the odd armored support and i can't even go into full details of the bullshit that ensued in our game because there was so much of it it was it was actually ridiculously funny so i thought i'd throw in a couple of highlights to try and express the levels of, of absurd hilarity that ensued the first is that within his first turn nick's death guard managed to wipe out my infiltrated seeker squad and then attach vigilator nearly to a man but the only survivors being that said vigilator and the seeker's sergeant, who then proceeded to bully, uh, who, who they then proceeded to bully into a corner for the rest of for the rest of the game. That was until the sergeant went nuts, as I declared to Nick, "Death, death or glory, you bastard!" and moved the sergeant in question behind the last vindicator laser destroyer, which was doing the aforementioned bullying. As I moved in closer into its near uh, rear arc, popping it with one shot from his plasma pistol. Victory cheers ensued as we gathered quite a few spectators at this point. We were both quite expressive players, myself in particular, having to walk off the sheer ass whooping I'd been taking from the Death Guard at the time and vice versa. Our cheers, banter, read friendly insults with lots of swearing, shouts of disbelief and laugh crying drew the attention of more than a couple of players who stood and sat to watch our game unfold, which we were more than happy to put on a show for. Fantastic, cool. That's what people don't really get, like, especially in the north. You're in London in this in this place, but, like, in the north, swearing at somebody with a jovial laugh is considered friendly, you know? I've had a few people take that the wrong way with, with friends of mine who've gone out and done that, or, or I myself have done that. And you have to say, listen, dude, you know, it's not serious. Just chill. You know, it's not, you know. But anyway, it's good that you guys are taking it so, so, uh, so on the chin. The second notable moment is when my Justerian Terminator squad had to march halfway up the board to meet a mob of 20 plus Death Guard tacticals who had been buffed to hell and back with characters, as the Justerian's usual Spartan transport had been hijacked by a large tactical, tactical squad of my own. They took a casual, casualty or two on the way, no big deal I thought at the time, until he brought down his own Spartan hang, uh, his own Spartan around the corner and wiped another two off the face of the earth with las cannons, leaving just one lone Terminator to face down 20 plus marines armed to the teeth with bayonets and character support. To hell with it, charge. This absolute chad of a Terminator, 1v versus 22'd the squad with nothing more than a chain fist and his titanium balls swinging between his legs. And the mad lad went round for round of combat, and by the time the Death Guard managed to plink off his two wounds, he had mulched at least ten of the marines. When he died, it cut me to my core, but holy hell was it fun. Yeah, dude, those are the moments that make Warhammer what it is. That Literally, those are the moments. Where you literally you put faith in the game and the dice, and you go, you know what? Bollocks to it. I'm going to go, I'm going in. You know, those the, that's why I do combat heavy armies. I don't do shooty armies. They're boring. I just don't like just plinking people from the back of the back of the board. I don't enjoy those games. I like sh running into close combat and just going, you know what? Bollocks to it. Let's get involved, shall we? And I just love it. I love the feeling of mulching things up. Um, especially when you're not supposed to. The amount of towel players I've upset in the past by when, they, when they've used their really cheesy everybody overwatches you at the same time rules. And, you know, you somehow get through that. 
somehow your your paladins get through that and they go charging into the tower gun line and just tear it to shreds. It's beautiful. Especially when the hammer hands on. Everything's turned on. You're just there, just having the time of your life. Honestly, loved it. Um, both sides had absolutely turned each other into brown bread, with casualty piles stacking very high. Our Praetors and their command squads had met in the middle of the field, surrounded by the burnt-out husks of tanks, dreadnoughts, and the piles of dead around them. The, the, the two groups charged into each other, with my Praetor challenging his to a duel, which he accepted. My command squad got butchered by their opponents, and after a couple of rounds of combat, in his challenge, he challenged my Praetor. His challenge, uh, my Praetor took an unlucky hit from his Paragon Blade and died. Or so Nick thought. My Praetor's Warlord trait was the Armor of Pride, a Sons of Horus trait, which essentially boiled down to: when this character dies, make a leadership check. If it's passed, they do not die and instead regain d3 wounds. Oh, I love that. To which I rolled for the full compliment. My prayer tour, like Randy Marsh versus Baghdad in South Park, stood back up with a defiant, I don't hear no bell, on, on his lips, as I, as I whipped out my phone, and began to play the Rocky theme song, as the combat re-ensued, to which my prayer tour, and with his thunder hammer, sent the Death Guard prayer tour to the Shadow Realm with one swing, and proceeded to take another bite into the command squad before being cut down again shortly after. I don't think I can put into words what it was like, where when I say we we on the small crowd that watched our game erupted with this sheer absolute turnaround. In the end, the game with Nick lasted nearly six hours. Oh my God. But again, I am I am tired just thinking about that. To which I lost just a two point difference. It was genuinely the best game of Warhammer I'd played in years. A fact I was proud to say uh, to him and the rest of the people in the store. Nick was even kind enough to invite me out to the curry place down the road after the game with his friends to end off the night before we all said our goodbyes, our goodbyes, and I got myself back to sleep after another uh, another stint in the hotel's club. Wow, that sounds like a terrific weekend, man. That really does. Again, that's what Warhammer's all about, though. That literally, we've had two stories today that I really wanted to put down here because that is what Warhammer is all about. We get so many nightmares on this channel that really do tear apart this hobby that we love. Sometimes in quite brutal ways with, with quite cringy people. But today I just thought we'll do a few cringe ones, but I really wanted you to see the good side, to see the side of the hobby that I know you've all, you're all sitting there on trains, in cars, wherever you are, thinking, yeah, you know, I've had a memory like that, and that's why I still do the hobby. If you don't have a memory like that, then come on the Discord and find one, because there'll be somebody on there who'll give one to you, trust me. I mean, like, you know, a hobby, like, hobby memory, not like a normal memory, that'd be weird. Anyway, love you all a long time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will speak to you tomorrow. Or Thursday. I might be might be writing scripts tomorrow for Thursday's uh, video. We'll see. If I am around tomorrow, I will see you then. If not, I will see you on Thursday. Love you all a long time. Speak to you later. Oh, by the way, if you are getting anything for Christmas, we're heading into Christmas now. Composite Games is the place to go. Head down to the description down below. Enter in the promo code Northern Exile, and you get you get a uh, five percent off at checkout. You already get twenty percent off, right? You already get twenty percent off. That means you get 25% off at checkout. That is half of the GW staff discount, dude. Half of that discount for you. Also, it gives the channel a bit more money to spend on things like prizes and things like the Astral Blade and things like that. So, love you all a long time. Speak to you later. Have a good one.